Yo, check out my website, www.theclowntimes.net. That's clown spell because you see here. As you see, here are my rants here. I'll be more and more regular in posting rants in the future. You see what I have going on here. Also, you can also get your merch here at www.cafepress.com. Search for the Clown Times Sports. You see here I have uh, sweatshirts, uh, hoodies, baby gear, mugs, T-shirts. So just come on over. And grab yourself some merch. We'll go to tonight's. I haven't been here in a while. Edition of the Clown on Podcast. I'm Scott Burks. Um, please check me out. You know the website www.theclowntimes.net, and also you can check me out on YouTube as well. Please continue to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'm up. I'm over 680 subscribers now. Trying to get to the 700 plateau. So please do the support. The channel, and if you don't agree with what I or my guests have to say tonight, just holler at us anyway, because at any of it, you'll be glad you did, and I'll be glad you did, and that's about that. So, I got my man back here with me, because we're going to, as you as you said, like, like suspect, we're going to talk a little HBCU stuff at the end about Dion's comments, and that's Brian's comments. But first, we're going to talk a little NBA. So we're going to get my man here. Y'all know him from Yard slash HBCU Sports. Rest for all things HBCU Sports. So we're Sleazy Radio every Tuesday night on Facebook Live and you can and YouTube, by the way. And last but not least, you can check out his great work on HillSports.com as he raps about all things FCS Athletics as it pertains to HBCU Sports. Dwayne Nash is back in the house. How you doing, sir? Scott, what's going on, brother? How about yourself? I am good. It's been a while, and but I'm glad to be talking to you and some of the other cats before that, but it's been too long. So let's get us started. But first, explain the Diablos hat right quick. I know you're watching <laughs> the Diablos hat. Yes, um, minor league baseball team the, uh, who are currently the um, El Paso Chihuahuas oh. at one point in time was uh was called the El Paso Diablos. Mm. So, you know, I saw the cap, thought it was a dope cap back in during my undergraduate years back in the 90s. Um it was very iconic on me when I wore it around campus. Of course, everyone um saw the Diablos cap and knew of my personality and tried to link the two as one. But um yes I was a little mischievous. That's another conversation for another time. <laughs> saw that the cap became available again um recently and i had to cop it because most definitely it <laughs> takes me back to my collegiate days of, of rocking this bad boy back then all right all right all right so oh and real quick oh, yes, um uh, uh, uh buddy Pugh, head coach of south carolina state most definitely raved about going to, to um when they played against the uh new mexico state back in 2021 the year in okay. which they won the black college championship um mm -hmm. he raved when he went down to new mexico they actually went over to el paso texas to actually check out the chihuahuas game and and, and talked about nice. the amount of fun that he had seen and um and that they had at the game and the things that they learned in terms of sports marketing while they were there too nice man you know i would love to have a conversation with him about that fully because i talked to him briefly about it but yeah i was about to say talk about friends yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. When he when he said it, you know, it, it pricked with my ears. You know, I'm I'm a I'm a casual fan of minor league baseball, primarily because, of course, during the the '90s, I wore a ton of minor league baseball caps. Right. So that's what sparked my interest in it, in, in you know, checking out the teams and you know the farm systems and, and watching guys matriculate and coming through um, up to the big leagues. There you go. So that's the random fact right there. Random. Little known black history fact, <laughs> if you will. But anyway, so speaking of history, let's just get to the NBA playoffs, man. It's exciting. This is yes. one of the more exciting wide open playoffs in recent memory. We all know that the Bucks got genuinely swept out of there by the Miami Heat and the shocker more on them in a moment. Um, and of course, you know, you got these matchups. I mean, uh, uh, Memphis is out, Sacramento Kings is out, which leaves the Lakers. And the and the worst is the six and seven and seven and six teams respectively going at it for a chance mm -hmm. to be in the West Conference Finals. We'll start the Eastern Conference first. Um, and another good one, good series: Celtics, Sixers, Barber, 
I mean, James Harden showed up with 42 points to go along with Joel Embiid's 30-plus point performance. Um, they were up. Then the Celtics almost took it away. And, you know, that overtime, for some reason, <clears throat> Jalen Brown, a big fan of his, for some reason, he left his man, his man being James Harden, the same James Harden who was cooking from three in overtime. He just left them, and then went back to him. It was too late. Hit the winning shot. Game over. And for some reason, Joe Mazzullo, head coach of the Celtics, refused to call a timeout. It's set up a play. But anyway, that's not here nor there. But this this series, man, this Celtics Sixers series, mind you, I think the Celtics should have been up 3-1 at least by now. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, this is shaping to be a seven-game series. Again, two historic rivals. Again, Brandon basketball has been very exciting. So, uh, what are your thoughts on the Celtics and Sixers? Because this is this has been a, this is living up to the hype so far. It is, you know, it's a two and three seed going at it most definitely. Like you said before, two uh, former, well, no, two two current still Atlantic Division foes um, yeah. matching up as potential um, finals representatives for the Eastern Conference. But before I get to that, real quick, I have to point this out. Um, I say it often on Steezy Sports. I'm the face. Coach is the mouth. Sweet Lou is the brains. And Sweet Lou pointed out something last week that I couldn't eloquently say as he did. Uh oh. Scott, I don't know if you noticed, but seeds one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight from both conferences. Well, I'm sorry. A one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight seed has advanced to the semi-final um, rounds um, during the playoffs. Um, like you said, with Denver being the one, um, Boston being the two, Celtics, yep. uh, Philly being the three. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 who's the four? Knicks? No, actually, Knicks aren't the, the four. Knicks are the five. five. Yeah. 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 Um, Phoenix is the four. Right. Six being Golden State, seven being the Lakers, and the eight seed, of course, being Miami. That's first wild. time, first time in NBA <laughs> history that has happened. Um, and then again, you know, this is this is like a continuation of the collegiate uh, basketball season where we're seeing top seeds get eliminated um, yeah. relatively early. But to your point, the, the 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 two and the three seed going at it right now. Um, God, the, the average point, uh, 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 the average um, scoring margin uh, uh, between the two teams. Boston has been averaging a little bit over 20 points in their wins. The um, the Sixers about three. Yeah. So, you know, whenever they play close games, it just happens to be a situation where uh, the Sixers are capable of stealing <clears> those <throat> games. And then, right. as you pointed out, in those two games, James Harden has been averaging 43 points a game. And we haven't seen James Harden average over 20 points a game. and Well, not average, but scored 20 points a game in consecutive games since the first round of the 2021 playoffs when they mm. played against Boston. Right. So it's right. been a minute since we've seen this James Harden, James Harden. I've been extremely critical of James Harden on this show saying that he's diminished and here he goes scoring uh, 40 points in two games in this series. It's crazy because I think James Harden, like he, he defers so much to Joel Embiid. Yeah. You took Joel Embiid and Doc Rivers saying, hey, you're a dead guy. We need for you to be that guy. Yeah. You know, to, to help out. He's been that guy. He's been that guy in two in games one and four. Yeah. Where the Sixers have won, have won. So, you know, it's it's been all James Harden in those two games. Uh speaking of Joel and B, I mean, he's gutting it out, man. He's clearly not hundred percent, but he's balling. And he's not his full self, which makes you wonder what would it be like if he was really a full strength. Now, mm -hmm. I think that he's going to eventually get one of those games where he's going to say, bump it. I'm going for it. And combine that, because he scored 34 points last game, but on 13 yeah. rebounds, on the bum knee, mm -hmm. essentially. And, you know, he, he was not efficient for the field going 11 to 26, but still, the point is, I'm waiting for him to have a game where he's like, bump it. And if it happens to coincide with a game that James Harden is letting it loose and, and they're having confidence, man, Philly's gonna be hard to beat. They already have they, they already have a uh the the bench is decent, not great. 
Mm-hmm. But I like the toughness. And, I, and, and you know, and I think as tough as Boston is, I think that I was wondering what, how Boston could handle a Sixers team with both Joel Embiid and James Harden saying, bump it. We haven't seen that game yet. No, we I haven't. Have it's, I have a feeling it's coming. It's coming real quick. But you know what, man, Scott? People have been hoping for that game ever since James Harden came over to Philly. True. And we just haven't – one of the closest that we got was game four. Right. The thing is, if they're <laughs> capable of stringing a bunch of those together, they could be very dangerous. And in my opinion, could mm-hmm. be uh, championship material. The right. problem is, like, <laughs> like Brown in that final play, I don't trust James Harden to do so. And, oh, my God, how ironic it would be that this time it's Joel Embiid that's fighting off the injuries while James Harden is the one that's attempting to turn it around and having that's consistent crazy. success, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, the, the, my, my, my question would be is if and when Joel Embiid becomes 100% or close to 100% as, as, as he can, Right. Will we still continue to see game one and game four James Harden or not? Right, right. Agreed, agreed. Uh, so we move along from that to the other Eastern Conference semifinal. My beloved New York Knicks, then the Miami Heat. I mean, hey, hey yo, I was, I've been saying, I said it on my blog, raise your hand if you had the Miami Heat and the New York Knicks going at it in round two in the Eastern Conference playoffs. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. You know, I will you, admit, I did have right. the Knicks advancing to the center. Well, yeah, I get the Knicks, yeah. Yeah. The Heat, yeah. yeah. Oh, after the Heat dropped down to the AC and barely got out of that game against the Raptors? Yeah. Well, no, it wasn't even a, was it, it was the Raptors. Yeah, they did beat the Raptors um, right. at the crib. So, yeah, no, I didn't have it either. And um, surprise, surprise, they got me. And um, they haven't looked back since. They have not. And the thing is, they generally swept the Milwaukee Bucks and leading that, leading to Giannis and to Jacopo to give that passionate post game uh, speech. Um, mm-hmm. Like, you know, which has gone viral. Y'all know what it is already. I'm not going to rehash it. Um, but man, to see a one, still a one man band, my Heat, with no Tyler Hero. With no Victor Oladipo, mm-hmm. not only would be being up on the Knicks two games to one after generally sweeping the Milwaukee Bucks, they're up right now. The Heat sixty one to fifty three in the third quarter, and I'm like pulling my what's ever left of my hair out. Right? <laughs> I mean, the thing is, is that I'm looking at the box score right quick. Jimmy Butler is playoff Jimmy. He's, he has fourteen points, but. Bill Adebayo is going off for 16. The bridge Uh-oh. is showing up. And um, now, now they're up by nine. And our bench, our Knicks, the Knicks bench is giving me next to nothing. Mm-hmm. So to me, this, that, that, this, this is one of the many reasons why I think you should give, we should all give props to Eric Spolster. And Coach yes. Just coaching brings around Tom Thibodeau. And 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 of course, uh, Mike Budenholzer of the Milwaukee Bucks, the first one who just got fired because of that, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> of that of that coaching clinic. But still, I mean, you gotta give it up for Coach Bo. But man, to see this Heat team again, the same Heat team that lost to Atlanta in the first play-in game, mm-hmm. got spanked by them at home, then had to come from behind and beat Toronto. Doing this in the playoffs, I mean, it's. I mean, I just say to always forget that the Heat are so battle tested. Yes, and to see yes. them ball out like this, man, it's like. And this is not an AC that's like similar to what's the 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 the, uh, the we believe team in Golden State that that spent Dallas that one year. Mm-hmm. This is a legit Miami Heat squad that's getting confident. By the round. And they're no joke. They are a tough out and then some. So the, I think the Knicks are in trouble. They may go down 3-1 tonight. Hell, they should be down 3-0 right now. We had no business winning game two. Mm-hmm. So could this be the best eight seed 
that we've seen in quite some time in the Miami Heat. This might be the best eight seed ever. Yeah. Might be the best eight seed ever. We've only seen six number eights win, you know, their first round series ever. Right. And they did it in five games. Right. You know, yes, the um, Denver Nuggets did it in five games against the Seattle Supersonics, but that was a, a, a time in which you only had to win three games in order to win the series. Right, it's best of five, right. These Bamas did it in five and convincingly in five. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, and, and, and <laughs> you talk about Coach Spo. got to remember, this is the same coach that everyone questioned this is higher originally. Of course. Right? And right. then there were questions on whether or not he would be able to coach that super team that, that LeBron built when he went down. Right. And then he's all he's been doing is just making this team viable ever since his hiring as head coach. Um, and in this in this series, they got six guys averaging in double figures right now. Of course, led by playoff Jimmy. And then you right. also got Kevin Love, who's in the fray, averaging seven and seven during the series as well. This is going <laughs> to. We talked about what Philly potentially could be. The same could be said about the Miami Heat. Now, right. Philly might be a, a matchup nightmare with Joel Embiid down low, but that's if he's healthy, right? Correct. And then, of course, if he can get past – well, if they can get past Boston. And even right. if Boston wins that series height-wise, it's a, it's a wash. And both of those teams play and play extremely hard. The question at that, that point, though, was consistency and who, will, who, will, who would be capable of winning on a consistent basis between Miami and Boston, and that would be a coin flip based right. from night to night. And you will, you would pray that no one would get injured in either series. But, yeah, as of right now, I would be t definitely afraid of the uh, Miami Heat right now, the way that they're looking and how confident they've been looking and how dominant they've looked in their wins throughout the playoffs. And that's the key. Confidence. Yeah. Miami is very, very, very confident. And again, I remember like Boston Celtics fans, like one particular Bill Simmons, right? Mm -hmm. That Bill Simmons. Like he, like at the start of the play, he was afraid that Miami would have gotten the seventh seed and faced the Celtics because it's a, it's a bad matchup. It's, it's, yeah. it's a bad matchup if, they're, if Miami's on. It turns out Miami's been on it. <laughs> and so, my God. I mean, it's good to see that we can on the Miami Heat New York Knicks playoff robbery. Yes. But damn, I mean, the, the, it's a coaching claim right now. And sports is winning that, winning that shit, hook, line, and sinker. It is just, it's amazing to see the job that he's doing right now. My Knicks. Again, a one man band and Jimmy Butler, the Jimmy Butler led Miami Heat, but the bitches, their bitches give them something. Mm -hmm. And again, my Knicks are being our coach. It's just really pathetic what it is, what it is. Which is um, why I said, uh-oh, when you said uh, Bam is giving them, what, 15 right now? Yeah. Something we haven't seen throughout the playoffs. Right. And he's a you damn know? good player. He's a damn yes. good player. He's just been cold for whatever reason. Uh -huh. he's, he's getting his groove back, and this is crazy. Yeah. And the irony, if the Heat go on to win this series, they become the second team, well, the second number eight seed to move on to a, uh, to a conference final behind, of course, the New York Knicks, who did it on the backs of the Miami Heat. Yeah, that's correct. That's the game at the first round. I remember that to this very day. Um, let's go to the Western Conference right quick, man. Another series that's living up to the hype. Denver, Phoenix. Denver won the first two games at home and held serve, and Phoenix held serve back, right back, won the next, the next two games. How about, man, Kevin Durant and, and, and Devin Booker? Both scored 36 points. Mm -hmm. Devin Booker had 12 assists, six rebounds. Kevin Durant with 11 rebounds, six assists. Uh, Landry Shamit did the damn thing last game, scored 19 off the bench. He actually won that game. He helped win that game for them. And for Denver and for Phoenix to withstand the Denver onslaught led by Nikola Jokic, who scored 53 points on 20 of 30 shooting. Two or four from, which includes two or four from three. Yes, I know a lot of those were lamps and stuff, but 20 of 30 is 20 I can't. of 30. I don't care. It's not right. about how <laughs> difficult the shots are. It's about how many points you score. And 53 points is 53 fucking points. Yes. Period. Period. 
with 11 assists to go off that. So, wow. Um, this this has seven games going all over it, too. It, it does. It really does. It, I, I think it does. And that's – which is great. But I think one thing about Denver, man, Denver showed me and many other fans out there, hey – Y'all not think about us. Y'all giving that. Y'all giving Phoenix some love, more love than we do. And I know we're a weak ass number one seed, but we're a number one seed for a reason. And they're they're doing it now. If they held on to win the series, that's another that's another thing. But this is a great series, man. This has been fun from the jump, and I'm really looking forward to Game Five. Really, am. you and me both. Um, this is very similar to the Boston Philly series. How close these get? Well, how close the lower seeds wins have been because they've been winning by an average of about I want to say it's somewhere around five or six points themselves mm-hmm. in, in the Phoenix Suns. Um, the problem is with 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 uh, Phoenix is as great as as what's your boy's name? Uh, not not about to call him Sumpert, but um, uh, uh, you just said his name. Um, for, for, for Denver or uh, Simon, uh, Simon. Landry Simon, Emmy Simon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As, as great as his performance, as, as Simmons' performance was in Game Three, they can't have it, him being the number three scorer for them. Right. Right. Where's DeAndre Ayton? I was going to ask you the same thing. This brother is a waste of damn height. I did two videos of him for shorts on YouTube and on and on TikTok. And how is a guy who goes seven feet tall? Grabs only a grand total of eight rebounds and scores a grand total of, wait for it, eight points on three of six shooting and had a brush minus of negative 13. How sway? How? He's been averaging six points per game in those two wins. And this is the same dude that was holding out for more money. Who was the other team that was bidding? For oh, Indiana. Pacers. He wanted to go to the Pacers. He didn't. He, he he did not want to go back to Phoenix. He wanted to go to Indiana, and Indiana gave him that offer sheet, and and the Phoenix Suns surprisingly matched. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on with that dude, but he's too damn talented and too damn big to not only average single digits. Dude should be a walk double double getting out of bed. Yes, he should. He's that. He's that talented, but. I mean, not only did he get a, a double single the second mm-hmm. of nights, did he get severely outplayed at a hustle by Nikola Jokic, a less, oh, yeah. lesser, who's far less athletically gifted than he is. It's just pathetic. It's just damn, it's, a, it's, it's really a goddamn shame. It really is. It is. And the, and the Suns are most definitely missing the leadership of Chris Paul. Yes, that part. But to the Nuggets' defense, Jamal Murray is looking like Jamal Murray of 2019 and 2020. Now he's averaging the most in in, uh, per game um, throughout the playoffs uh, in his career, even though it's by 0.2 points than it was. um, And what was that? 2020. Or when he went off for the bubble. 2021. Yes. He went off for the bubble in 2020. Yeah. That's, that was when he had those back to back 50 point games along with uh, what's his name from from Utah. Um, Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell, yeah. That was yeah. a classic duel. But, yeah, dude went for 28 points. Dude being Jamal Murray with 28 uh-huh. points, seven assists, and five rebounds. He's ball. Yes. This is good to see. It's a beautiful thing to see. Yeah. And with him playing as well as he's been playing along with Jokic, well, Jokic, huh, no one anticipated this happening, but it's right. happening. The thing is, though, and my sister, who's a huge Lakers fan, will most definitely point this out one more again. <laughs> if Denver can get past the um the, the Phoenix Suns, is that Jokic does not play well against the LA Lakers. Right. And you know, we're that about to talk man. about the Lakers soon, but you know, right. he just does not he hasn't been impressive, I should say. Sure. He'll give you like 20, 10, and 10, which a lot of teams will most definitely love to have. Right. But it's not MVP caliber Jokic that you would anticipate. And I'm wondering what this Denver team would look like against this current iteration of the Lakers and how he would face in that particular series. As fun as a a Golden State Denver series would be, I'm licking my chops for Denver LA. 
I think a lot of us are. Speaking of, we just talked about right now, the up two games to one on the aforementioned Warriors, which <clears throat> be prepared to be the series of the playoffs, just with the star power alone. Steph mm-hmm. Curry from Golden State, LeBron and Anthony Davis from, from L.A. Um, we throw in Clay and Draymond as well from Golden State. We just disrespect those cats. But, mm-hmm. I mean, to me, to, we talk well, about Clay matchups. Well, Clay and Draymond, but, you know. Well, yeah, there you go. Yeah. But, <laughs> nevertheless, <laughs> um, you're talking about matchups, man. Golden State's the defending world champs, right? Mm-hmm. But this is a matchup that they are having a hard time with, with the Lakers length. Mm-hmm. Because... Golden State for I mean uh, if, if you go up against the Lakers uh, Lakers length, a team like Golden State that lives and dies by the three would not do so well against them. Mm-hmm. I mean the biggest guy is what Kavon Looney at six nine, and then Anthony Davis is almost a legit set seven foot if not yeah. six eleven, and he's been eating them up because as well as LeBron James been playing, he's a superstar in his own right as we all know, and you know. In the, in the rest of the world plays playing well, Austin Reeves, D'Angelo Russell. Really, Golden State does not have an answer for Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis could be eating all series long if he wants to, except that AD, instead of being um, always dependable, turns out to be always disappointing. <laughs> I mean, it's like it's like if you have – I got that for Shannon Sharp, so South Shannon Sharp. But <laughs> if you – Every time he has a good game, he falls it up with a duck. Same thing with game three. So, which means I think he's going to just crap the bed in game four. So, I'm wondering, is this dude, again, we talked about um, uh, 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 DeAndre Ayton earlier. I'm just saying that he's as trash, and that Davis is as trash as, as DeAndre Ayton. But it's simple. There's both similar says that they don't have a motor. Mm-hmm. They don't have a motor. And, you know, it's just that if Andy Davis has the desire of a Draymond Green, oh, my goodness. Uh, that would be, you know, the, the thing that would make that, that series just that much more dominant, right? right? But before I even get on AD, I got to talk about the role players for the for the Lakers. Right, um, Schroeder, mm-hmm. Rui, uh, Lonnie Walker, right, Austin Reeves are averaging at least nine a, a, a series plus, mm-hmm. uh, a nine, nine a game plus per game during the series. Right. Um, but you're right. AD has not given us a back-to-back 20-point um, performance since, what was that? God, it, it goes back to 2021. Yep. He hasn't given us a back-to-back 20-point performance since, since back then. And, um, when he gives uh, the Lakers at least 22 points in the game, they're four and one so far during the playoffs this year. Right. But as a Laker, they are 20 and five whenever he gives them at least 22 uh, or more. So if, if he can do that on a consistent basis, again, the Lakers would be completely dominant. The thing is though, we don't know what AD we're going to get from game to game. Are we going to get, the, the AD that we got in game three, or are we going to get the now infamous, what I like to call Mr. Glass, with this Bama will get hurt just jumping up for a rebound. Exactly. Or as Charles Barkley would tell him, we call him all the time, street close. Yes, right? You come street close, Davis. It's uh, Anthony <laughs> Davis. So it's just it, it's just frustrating. I mean, I talk to members. I know members of – all members – a lot of members, excuse me, Laker Nation, they're mm-hmm. frustrated as hell with it. I could feel their pain. I grew, I grew up hating the Lakers, been a Knicks fan and the Celtics. But still, the point is – is when I see a dude who's capable of going, going talking about uh, DeAndre Ayton being a walking double double that just got out of bed, any day we should be 30, 30 and 15. He's yeah. 30 points, 15 rebounds at least. Yes, he had 25 and 13 mm-hmm. in game three when the dominant faster. He's much more dominant in game one. But he just needs to, I mean, the matchup screen for Andy Davis to be that dude. Yes. It's just screaming for him to be that dude. Because who's going to check him? Now they have Golden State has no one that could match him up size wise and by physicality and skill and talent. Mm-hmm. He's, he's the biggest dude out there. And to see him just take a night off every other fucking night is just crazy to me. But for Laker Nation's sake, I hope that Bama, using your word, shows the hell up. <laughs> 
Because <laughs> again, the matchup scream for him to dominate. Yes, it, it does. for him to dominate. I mean, LeBron is LeBron, but LeBron even said himself, this should be Anthony Davis's team. Yeah. That I'm was like, the hope when he first old. came over. Was that you know what Braun can go ahead and just relinquish everything to A B, yeah. let him run it, but right. that Bama just can't stay healthy. And um to your point, remember that that stretch earlier in the season when he was like dominating and having insane games like in in, in November and early December? Mm -hmm. My sister was screaming, trade him now. This is trade bait AD <laughs> right now. Let somebody else deal with that problem and let us roll with Thomas Bryant. Let us get another young big down there to play alongside and develop around LeBron, and we can go ahead and win this thing with young boys. But the Lakers made their choice. Right. And it's not necessarily a trash choice. Right. It would be a lot much better if they can get consistent. But in the <laughs> defense of Golden State, with Steve Kerr as their head coach, the, the Golden State Warriors are 8-0 and after playoff floor losses of 15 points or more. Right. They're seeking the six series win while trailing that series two to one. And they are three and one in games when trailing the series. So things are leaning towards a Golden State win. So you add those three things up along with the fact that AD can't give you more than 20 in back to back games. That screams Golden State wins this game in a tough road win because they've only won what? The, the 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 13 road games during the entire season including the playoffs right. so that's something they're not capable of doing if they do this right now tonight and are able to go back to um to to, to san francisco tied 2-2 it most definitely will make that series that much more interesting and like you said quite possibly could go seven exactly exactly and so we could all bet on whether this goes seven or not by going to betus.com. So it's a quick shout out to our sponsors. So listen to the sports betters. Your favorite sports book, betus.com, is back for the 20th year of it for action with the industry's biggest sign up bonus up to 200%. BetUS, all, BetUS rather, offers members the opportunity to cash in for all your favorite sports, including the NFL, UFC, and MLB. You look at the for live in game betting, incredible odds with daily odds, boosters, props, and parlays. They got them. How about fast payouts and accessible one of one customer service? They have that too. So log to BE2ES.com or call 800 792 387 That's 800-79-BET-US. Use the promo code TKT for the clown times as well. BETUS.com, where the game begins. All right, man, let's close this show out with something that you know and did know well and dearly love, HBCU Sports. Unfortunately, since the world tonight is Bama's, some Bama's <laughs> are contaminating the, the sport that you that you love truly, dearly to your heart. First, let's start with Deion Sanders, former Jackson State coach, now current Colorado coach. Deion Sanders tweeted last week that he was quote ashamed of the 31 NFL teams after Isaiah Bolden was a lone HBCU player. Drafted. He was drafted out, out, out of Jackson State as cornerback Henry Turner, selected by the New England Patriots in the Silver Brown. So, let, and so also to someone who doubled back to piggyback on that, rather, was one Des Bryant. Mm -hmm. And he had this to say, and I quote In order for an HBCU to thrive, you are going to have to throw these colleges into these beer conferences like the Big 12, Pac-12, SEC, et cetera, and allow these colleges to get better over time. Let's keep it real. And, uh, well, now for him to throw the Pac-12 in there, suspect and have himself given what's going on with them, but that, that's not a here nor there. The fact of the matter is, man, these are two guys who really don't know what the hell they're talking about. So which one do you want to go first? Which one do you want to take first? I want to do it in chronological order. Okay, right? let's go to yeah, let's go to prime time. Yes, go ahead. start with Coach Prime first. Yeah. Um, as much of an issue, actually, this issue, I was going to originally say that it's an FBS issue because I think they had about eleven guys get drafted from the FBS level. Mm -hmm. Um, this is yeah, a college yeah. football issue. 
It's the FC, FCS or FBS? I'm, I'm sorry, it's the FCS issue. Okay, gotcha, Thank you, gotcha. thank you. Mm -hmm. But, God, you could also throw FBS in there as well, right? Um, I'm still doing the numbers on this because I want to go ahead and see what, what these numbers bear out over the past few to four years. Mm -hmm. But in this season, we've had 40% of the players drafted in this past draft. Right. It's got from 19 teams. 19 team totals gave us 40% of the NFL draft. Right. right. That's insane. Yep. We had almost 40 guys come from four teams. And yes, all four of those teams were the teams that participated in the FBS playoffs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, huh, you know, this is a thing in which, you know, again, I've said it before, I've said it before in this show, and I'll say it again, where NFL um, scouts, maybe they're lazy. A lot of people like to believe they're just drafting the best available talent. We right. really won't know until they play and, and it bears <clears throat> out, right? But unfortunately, sure. uh, a lot of these guys from programs that aren't Power 5 programs, mm -hmm. at best, they'll make it to minicamp. At best, if they're not undrafted free agents. And even in those situations, they it's difficult to make it to a 53-man 53, a 53 roster. Hell, right. if you're a draft pick from the rounds five and below, it's you still, difficult. Yeah. Exactly. Making it to an NFL um, right. roster. And in most cases, that's when those guys get drafted. Mm -hmm. Now, Prime wants to go ahead and complain about the fact that only one guy um, got drafted from an HBCU this year. Everyone likes to point out the fact that four guys got drafted last year. No, technically it's five. If you right. want to count Brian Cook, yes, Brian Cook finished his, finished his career at Cincinnati. Mm -hmm but started his career at Howard University. Right. You know, a lot of people don't remember that, don't, don't care to want to know that. So I always count that as five, especially in this era of transfer portals where guys are transferring as as, as much as they do. Um, it's going to be kind of hard to label guys what school they go to unless you just want to stick with the school in which they finished. But that might yeah. even be a situation where they may have only played there a year, but that's a whole nother tangent that I don't want to go to right now. Let me get back to the focus. Right. So, Prime was complaining <laughs> about the fact that there's only been one guy drafted out of this draft. Oh, my God. If only there was a guy that was a former Hall of Famer in the NFL that has clout and has influence with team GM scouts, coaches, and owners that could potentially help get more guys drafted that was participating or maybe even say, even what a coach, maybe even an assistant coach, or hell, even a head, even a head coach <laughs> at an HBCU mm -hmm. to help these guys get drafted. Maybe more of these guys will get drafted. Oh, but wait, we did have that guy in Deion Sanders, who oddly enough decided to leave because he wanted to elevate before he got before it was time to terminate his time down in Jackson State. Um, even more interesting, of course, where GMs and a lot of these uh, media pundits love to talk about with, with, when, that, when this topic of conversation comes up is the lack of talent that's at HBCUs. Hmm, I wonder what an HBCU would look like if they had the number one overall player come there and play for them. Could he potentially go pro and 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 help get more attention to not only that program but potentially to the conference? Oh wait, Jackson State had that in Trav uh in Travis Hunter, but along with Travis and his guy and his and uh Dion Son Shador. And a couple of other players, they all transferred to Colorado. So all of that conversation about being disappointed in HBCU guys not moving up to the well, not getting drafted to the NFL when you were in a when you, when you were in a position to help affect that, bro. I don't want to hear from you. I don't. Right. I don't. You 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 got other problems that you're dealing with in Colorado. I don't know what the realistic number is. I just saw a graphic that said 71. I saw something that said 43. I don't know, but you've got players leaving in mass exodus out of Boulder right now. And 
you know what, to their defense, them Bamas did go 1-11 last year. It's probably it's time for an overhaul. Yeah. But you got your own problems to worry about. Allow us to worry about what we're worrying about over here with the HBCUs. But I do find it interesting with all the initiatives that take that, that have been created with the HBCU Combine, with the HBCU Legacy Bowl. The issue before these things were created was that we're not getting more opportunities for these guys to be in front of scouts and in front of GMs and in front of team owners. These things exist now, and we've only had, again, five guys over the past two years, well, six guys over the past two seasons get drafted from HBCUs. Is it really helping? What's the excuse now? So the excuse now is that these guys aren't talented. Isaiah Land isn't talented. Yes, he was picked up by – I'm a grown when I say this, the Dallas Cowboys as an undrafted <laughs> agent, and God knows right. I don't want to see that banner with a star on the side of his helmet. Yeah. Um, and then we had uh, several other players, including with my Washington Commanders picking up uh, Joshua Pryor out of Bowie State as mm-hmm. undrafted free agents. Um, huh, it's, it's nice if these guys get drafted, but I would prefer that they go ahead and go as undrafted free agents, even though it's slightly harder for UDFA to get um, or make a roster spot than a, 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 a drafted guy. At mm-hmm. least the UDFA guys have the opportunity to control their own narrative and decide right. where they want to go right. rather than being um, selected. And at the same time, they can negotiate at least a similar, if not greater, contract than the guy that gets drafted later on. So right. they have that freedom there to do that. And they get a shorter contract, so they have the ability, if they can play well within that 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 time frame of their first contract, to get that bigger money quicker than you can if you get drafted. Um, again, right. it's great to hear your school name called. It's great to hear your, player, your favorite player's name get called late in the draft. But in that instance, Rounds five or more, I would prefer that those guys go as UDFAs and get drafted because they right. have that control. But um, yeah. Huh. First the the the, the, the Dion's words, and then another cowboy comes out and Des Bryant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what got me. Des Bryant. I was like, does he even know the back? Does he even know the back? I mean, they're FC. A lot of those HBCUs are FCS squads. Does he know like the difference between the FCS squad and the FBS squad, let alone the Power Five? No, he does not. Right. So yeah. he's just making it seem as though it's just easy for a FCS program whose average annual budget is of ten million dollars or less to mm-hmm. just gallivant their way into a power five conference Mm -hmm. and not just that even if they could just say you know what i'm gonna pick up my back forget about the fact that not only would these conferences become the hand and have nots where the potential teams Mm -hmm. that can even think about going fbs if those guys go you still have a bunch of guys in the swac in the MEAC that don't have the, the the revenue in order to do so and they would still be left behind. But that's another conversation for another time. I'm going to avoid the fiscal aspect of it <laughs> as a whole because apparently that banner can't even understand that. Let me just stick to this fact. As it pertains to the money-generating sports, football, men's basketball, women's basketball, if you have it, hockey, If those HBCUs were to move over to those Power Five conferences, they would literally become the next Rutgers in Nebraska and be there and get mollywhopped on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. And just because you're in a Power Five conference doesn't necessarily guarantee that you're going to get drafted into the NFL. As much as it helps, it's not necessarily a guarantee. Can, can we run down the list of all of the Power Five conference teams that own, that had one player get drafted there? Let's go through this line real quick. Um, mm, yes, Arizona State, Pac-12, like 
um, your boy called they should go to. I doubt that, right? Mm-hmm. Cal, another Pac-12 team, right? Florida State, one guy. Um, Baylor, Big 12, one guy. Washington State, Rutgers, um, West Virginia, um, Virginia, <laughs> Virginia mm-hmm. Tech, Missouri, um, NC State. Uh, 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 Georgia Tech, Bethune, Cookman, Texas Tech. Does it really help if you're in a power five? Not necessarily, especially if you're getting mollywopped. <laughs> you're still going to have one guy. Right. It don't even matter. So, uh, bruh, I'm going to need you to <laughs> uh, either, and, and this isn't necessarily me being a gatekeeper here. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, this is me wanting someone to speak with some sort of intelligence. Right. Because w- what you're saying is these schools should just walk to a power five and say, hey, let us in. When there are other FBS programs that are looking to do the exact same thing that have larger revenues, that have larger um, enrollment than the HBCUs, that are actually getting state money <laughs> unlike most HBCUs right. to help fund their institutions. That's another yep. tangent that I know will probably, you know what, I'm not going to insult the man. I'm not. But <laughs> for him to say what he said boggles my mind to make it seem that easy. Oh, bro, you can just go ahead and just go ahead and just become a Power 5 conference team and go ahead and get your guys drafted. And then he followed it up by saying, if I wasn't playing ball, I would have gone to an HBCU. Hmm. Wow. Again, I'm not going to sit here and insult the man, but um, yeah, I just ask that anyone that is critical of anything, it would help if you were educated on it, especially if you're speaking on HBCUs and it comes my way. I'm going to want you to be educated on it. Right. At least. Or at least be willing to be educated. And that was um, not a bright state. Because you don't want to get your ass roasted the way he got roasted on Twitter. Oh, he most definitely got roasted. And I'm glad that those that got him got him. But I, I'm i I'm looking to go ahead and actually put up figures so he can see that. You know what? Because sometimes for some people, it helps to see numbers and colors. Mm-hmm. So they can learn things a little bit easier. <laughs> numbers and so yeah, go ahead <laughs> And put some numbers up and put some colors up so you can see and say, oh, okay, I get it now. They can't just do that. Hell, they haven't. Never mind. Never mind. Just know this. It's not that easy. Because if that was the case, all what? Because there are about five to six hundred collegiate football programs on the FCS, FBS, and D2 level. If it was that easy, there will be over 500 schools that will be knocking down the door of the Power Five conferences looking to get in so they can get more exposure and more money. Right, right. All right, bro, well said. Where can we find the great work on social media? As always, the Yard HBCU, all social media platforms. And coming soon to Herosports.com because the football season is right around the corner. Media days are coming up in July, so we're going to start yes. doing our preview soon for everything. Yes, Catch me there on Herosports.com where I'll be um, very soon doing previews for the, um, for the upcoming football season. And then, of course, you know, I will be tweeting out things about the um, recent track and field championships that have been going on right now. Congratulations to North Carolina a and um, who finished third for the, uh, I believe it was third for women's, fourth for men um, in the CAA conference. Um, and I believe that the SWAC and MEAC are going on right now as it pertains to Division One track and field. So um, good luck to those programs that are out there looking to win conference championships and hopefully compete on the national level. All right, man. Y'all heard us. Please check this brother out. It's great work. You see the website on the backdrop, theyardhbcu.com, heroesports.com, and of course, Lee's ready every Tuesday night on Facebook Live and YouTube. All right, and so please see this like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel, man. 
either event, even if you agree or not, you'd be glad you did, and I'll be glad you did. So until next time, take care, enjoy the rest of the NBA playoffs. We out here.